What if I told you that your brain isn't what you think it is? You probably imagine it as a rigid, all-powerful control sensor, a biological supercomputer of sorts, a perfectly calibrated machine that's running your thoughts, it's storing your memories, it's guiding your every move. But science is beginning to reveal that the brain is weird, it's chaotic, and it's far more malleable than we ever imagined. You aren't just stuck with the brain you're born with. It reshapes itself daily. Memories are not faithful recordings. They change every time you recall them. Decisions are made before you're even aware of them, and your gut influences your mood and choices more than you'd like to admit. We are in a glittering period for neuroscience, one that is only accelerating. These discoveries are shattering our understanding of the mind and brain, rewriting the rules on who we are, how we think, and what we're truly capable of. For decades, scientists thought the brain was set in stone. You're born with a certain number of brain cells, they said, and once you reach adulthood, no new neurons form. If you damage a part of your brain, it's gone forever. That belief, though, completely wrong. Your brain is constantly changing. Every thought, habit, and new skill physically rewires it. This phenomenon, called neuroplasticity, means that you're never truly stuck with the same brain. Neurons that fire together wire together. The more you repeat something, the stronger those neural connections become, and this can happen at any age. You don't have to be young. Just before we continue with today's episode, a quick word from our fantastic sponsor, and that's Incogni. Have you ever wondered how scammers and shady companies get your personal info? Oh my lord. Well, I know the answer now. <laughs> because I'm doing this ad, aren't I? But I did wonder, and it's because of something called data brokers who collect and sell your private data without you even knowing it. Which sucks. Well, that's where Incogni comes in. Incogni automatically contacts data brokers on your behalf, demanding that they remove your personal information. It's basically a set it and forget it way to keep your data out of the wrong hands. And if you think this does not affect you, just look what happened to BT Group's data breach recently. The ransomware attack left tons of people exposed. And when data like that gets leaked, it ends up on broker sites. There's no putting the genie back in the bottle. And that makes you a target for scams and identity theft. So look, Incogni let you take your personal data back. Right now, you can get 60% off an annual plan by using the code SIDEPROJECTS at incogni.com slash SIDEPROJECTS. Again, that's incogni.com slash SIDEPROJECTS. Stay private, stay protected. And now back to today's episode. Now, one of the most astonishing discoveries in neuroscience comes from Dr. Michael Merzenich, a pioneer in neuroplasticity. His experiments on brain remapping revealed that the brain constantly rewires itself based on experience, learning, even injury. In one famous study, Merzenich mapped the brain's sensory regions in monkeys and then surgically altered the nerves connected to their hands. The brain rewired itself, shifting sensory processing to a different area, proving that neural pathways are not static. They're fluid. Human stroke patients relearn how to walk because their brains reroute functions to healthy areas. People who lose their sight develop heightened hearing because the visual cortex rewires itself for sound. An even more astonishing discovery followed. Scientists found that neuroplasticity is not limited to brain injuries or specific tasks. It happens all the time. When London taxi drivers were studied, MRI scans revealed that their hippocampus, the brain's navigation hub, was physically larger than average. Why? Because they had memorized thousands of streets and landmarks, and their brains had literally changed shape. More recently, studies have shown that meditation, musical training, and even learning a new language can rewire the brain, strengthening neural pathways and boosting cognitive function. And this is not wishful thinking, it's biology. Your brain is designed to evolve. With the right stimulation, anyone can sharpen their memory, enhance problem-solving skills, and even recover lost abilities after injury. That means our limitations are not set in stone. We can reshape the way we think, react, even the way we feel. We train our focus and concentration just as we do with muscles. We can rewire our brains to break bad habits by creating new pathways. Neuroplasticity, it's not just a concept. It's really a revolution in our understanding of intelligence, of healing, and of human potential. What happens when we die? Does the mind simply shut down like a light bulb flicking off? Or is there something more, a final burst of consciousness, a last flicker of awareness before the endless void? In an accidental but groundbreaking study, neuroscientists recorded the brainwaves of an 87-year-old patient at the University of Tartu in Estonia who suffered a fatal heart attack while undergoing a brain scan to track seizures and guide treatment. 
In his final moments, his brain produced rhythmic bursts of activity, the same kind seen during dreaming, deep meditation, and memory recall. At the precise moment of death, the patient's brain behaved as if it was reliving experiences. This could finally explain, and perhaps even prove, the reports from people who've survived near-death experiences that there's the sensation their entire life flashes before their eyes. Maybe that's not just poetic imagery. Maybe it is a real, measurable event hardwired into the brain's final act. Some scientists speculate that it could be the last information processing surge, a final attempt to make sense of existence. Others suggest it's an evolutionary feature, one last assessment of life's critical moments, extracting meaning from the past in a final burst of clarity. But humans are not the only ones who experience this. Similar patterns have been found in dying rats and other animals, hinting that this isn't just a human phenomenon. Death might be accompanied by a final organized neural storm that science is only just beginning to understand. If this is true, what does it mean for consciousness? Is the mind still aware in those last moments? Does death happen instantly, or does the brain linger in a state of hyperactive reflection? Who knows? We're definitely not there yet, but it does open the possibility that the moment of death might not be the end of awareness, but rather a doorway to something far more mysterious. Mapping every single connection in a human brain, the pathways that thoughts travel, the intricate web of signals firing every millisecond, is currently virtually impossible. The human brain is absurdly complicated, with around 86 billion neurons, roughly the same number as there are galaxies in the observable universe. While there's no scientific proof for the phrase, we know more about space than the human brain, it's a commonly repeated adage, with some weight. The brain is, by far, the most complex object known to humanity. But what if we thought smaller? Could we successfully map an animal's brain? And yeah, we certainly can. In fact, we've done it. An international team of researchers accomplished a milestone once thought to be decades away. They mapped the complete neural wiring of a fruit fly's brain. Every 140,000 neurons and 50 million synaptic connections painstakingly reconstructed. This isn't just a pretty diagram, it is an exhaustively detailed connectome, a precise blueprint of how information flows through a living brain. You might think fruit flies are not worth celebrating, but bear with me here. Despite their tiny size, fruit flies share fundamental brain structures with humans. Their neurons communicate in remarkably similar ways. Scientists can unlock insights into learning, memory, decision-making, and even neurological disorders by decoding how signals move through their brains. It's like having a mini test model for the human brain, allowing researchers to experiment, observe, and understand complex cognitive processes without waiting for decades-long human trials. But this isn't just about fruit flies. This mapping is a proof of concept. If we can fully map the brain of a tiny insect, how long before we can do the same for larger, more complex brains, including our own? It's conceivable that we might be nearing a future where we can trace every single thought, memory, or emotion back to its exact neural connection. A future where disorders like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or depression can be understood and treated at their core by simply following the brain's wiring diagram. And we're not there yet. Mapping a human brain would require an astronomical leap in technology, but this fruit fly connectome is the first step in a journey that could one day decode the essence of human thought itself. Most people think of exercise as a way to build muscle, improve endurance, or stay in shape. However, researchers at MIT have uncovered something far more intriguing. Physical activity directly stimulates brain growth. Their study found that during exercise, muscles release a cocktail of biochemical signals that encourage the formation of new neurons. These molecules travel through the bloodstream, reaching the brain and triggering the growth of neural connections. In other words, when you move your body, you're not just strengthening muscles, you're rewiring and reinforcing your brain. This discovery could have significant implications for brain health. Regular physical activity boosts cognitive function, enhances memory, and even supports supports recovery from neurological injuries. Patients recovering from strokes or brain trauma may benefit from structured exercise programs designed to stimulate neural repair. For healthy individuals, consistent movement may help protect against age-related cognitive decline. 
Scientists have long suspected a link between exercise and brain function. Online health influencers have often pushed this theory, but this research provides the clearest picture of how it happens at the cellular level. The brain isn't just passively affected by exercise, it actively responds, adapting and growing in response to movement. This reinforces the idea that keeping the body active is just as crucial for mental sharpness as physical health. The benefits go beyond fitness. Exercise plays a vital role in shaping and sustaining the brain itself. Losing weight isn't just about shedding fat, it changes your brain. Recent research into intermittent energy restriction has revealed that weight loss triggers shifts in both the gut microbiome and neural activity, particularly in areas linked to appetite and addiction. The gut and brain are tightly connected, constantly exchanging signals through the vagus nerve and biochemical messengers. When weight drops, the balance of gut bacteria shifts, altering how the brain processes hunger, cravings, and even reward responses. Some of the same neural pathways involved in addiction and impulse control are affected, which could explain why many people find it easier to resist unhealthy foods after sustained dietary changes. This discovery sheds light on why some diets work better than others. It's not just about cutting calories, it's about how different eating patterns retrain the brain to manage hunger and cravings more effectively. Intermittent fasting and other forms of structured energy restriction may play a role in rewiring these responses, making long-term weight management more sustainable. The implications they extend beyond weight loss. Understanding the gut-brain connection could lead to new strategies for treating obesity, binge eating, and metabolic disorders by targeting both gut health and brain function together. Diet, it turns out, isn't just about what happens in the stomach. It's about how the brain responds to food on a fundamental level, a relationship more intricate than we ever imagined. Now, before we move on, let's just take a quick look at this bizarre part of the human body that some are starting to refer to as the second brain. One of the most groundbreaking findings in recent neuroscience comes from studies on the gut microbiome, the trillions of bacteria living in your digestive tract. Researchers at UCLA discovered that these microbes can shape mood, cognition, even behavior. In one experiment, they gave healthy women probiotics designed to alter their gut bacteria. After just four weeks, brain scans revealed profound changes in their emotional processing, particularly in regions linked to stress and anxiety. Science has now linked gut health to conditions like depression, autism, and even neurodegenerative diseases. When researchers transplanted gut bacteria from anxious mice into calm mice, the calm mice became anxious, as if their personality had been rewritten by their microbiome. The gut-brain connection is so powerful that scientists are now exploring microbiome-based treatments for mental health disorders. Some experiments suggest that changing gut bacteria through diet, probiotics, or even fecal transplants, which are absolutely a thing, could improve mood, boost focus, and help regulate stress. The discovery is changing the way that we think about the mind. The brain does not act alone. It is in constant conversation with the gut. If we can influence that conversation, we might unlock new ways to improve mental health, brain function, and overall well-being. Depression is one of the most widespread mental health conditions, yet traditional treatments, medication and therapy, do not work for everyone. Antidepressants can take weeks to show results, and for some, they cause side effects that outweigh the benefits. But neuroscience is pushing treatment boundaries with an innovative approach. Brain stimulation headsets that use electrical pulses to target the brain's mood-regulating circuits. These devices rely on techniques like transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS. This method delivers gentle electrical currents to specific areas of the brain linked to mood, motivation, and emotional regulation. Unlike deep brain stimulation, which requires surgical implants, IDCS is entirely non-invasive. The user wears a headset that delivers subtle electrical stimulation through the scalp, influencing neural activity in real time. The idea might sound futuristic, but the science is solid. Clinical trials have shown that regular use of these headsets can significantly reduce symptoms of depression, sometimes achieving the same effects as medication, but without the chemical side effects. Some patients who had struggled for years with treatment-resistant depression have reported noticeable improvements in mood, focus, and emotional resilience after consistent use. The technology could be a game-changer, particularly for those who don't respond well to medication. Unlike antidepressants, which affect neurotransmitters throughout the entire brain, brain stimulation headsets offer a more targeted approach, finely tuning activity in the exact regions responsible for emotional balance. 
Researchers are also exploring whether they could be used to treat other conditions such as anxiety, PTSD, and even cognitive decline in aging populations. While still in development, this approach signals a shift in treating mental health. Instead of relying solely on altering brain chemistry, we're now exploring ways to moderate brain activity directly, offering a glimpse into a future where mental health treatments are more precise, more effective, and more personalized. Have you ever smelled a familiar scent and instantly been transported to a childhood memory? Or heard a song that brought back a clear moment from years ago? It's not just nostalgia that you're feeling, it's, well, neuroscience in action. Scientists have uncovered how the brain naturally links memories together, creating a network of interconnected experiences. At the core of this process are shared neural ensembles, groups of neurons that fire together when we experience something. When two events happen in close time, these neurons overlap their activity, effectively tying the memories together. This is why recalling one memory can instantly trigger another, even if they weren't originally connected in an obvious way. This linking mechanism plays a crucial role in learning. It allows us to build narratives, recognize patterns, and predict future events based on past experiences. When you learn something new, your brain automatically searches for previously stored memories that might relate, strengthening those connections and making recall easier. However, this process is not always perfect. Sometimes unrelated memories get tangled together, leading to false associations or distorted recollections. This could explain why specific memories feel vivid but contain inaccuracies, or why a single detail like a smell or a phrase can bring back emotions tied to an entirely different event. Understanding how memory linking works doesn't just deepen our knowledge of recall, it has major implications for conditions like PTSD, Alzheimer's, and anxiety disorders. If scientists can figure out how to disrupt or reinforce certain connections, we might one day be able to weaken traumatic memories or strengthen lost ones, reshaping how we experience the past. Your brain isn't just an organ. It is an expanding mystery, a universe of electrical storms and biochemical whispers constantly shifting just beneath your awareness. Every neuron, Every synapse, every flicker of thought is part of a system so intricate that we are only just beginning to scratch the surface of its possibilities. With every new discovery, our understanding grows. But so does the realization of how much remains unknown. Neuroscience is revealing a reality more complex than we ever imagined, and technology is beginning to influence neural activity in ways that we once thought impossible. Each breakthrough brings us closer to understanding what makes us think, feel, and exist. What lies ahead could change everything. New maps of the brain may lead to treatments for conditions we barely understand, while advances in AI could transform how we decode thought itself. The line between biology and technology is absolutely blurring, and the potential for reshaping the human mind is closer than ever before. Thank you for watching.